this special meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Waco Independent School District to order. At this time, the board will go into closed session pursuant to Texas Open Meetings Act 551.073, personnel related to superintendent search. And we will be reconvening in open session. Um, I, I can't predict exactly, but I'd say um, within the hour. Okay. All right, thank you and welcome. This special meeting of the Waco ISD Board is hereby called to order. All items discussed or voted upon this evening have been posted as required by state law. I ask that you turn your cell phones to silent if you haven't already. The room's pretty quiet, so I haven't heard a phone go off. Um, we are going to take item eight on the agenda. Consider, discuss, and take appropriate action regarding the selection of the superintendent finalist out of order. And uh, move it up, let's see, to item four, and then we'll proceed with the agenda as posted um, following, after, after the announcement, then follow on with the consent agenda. So at this time, I will entertain a motion. Mrs. President, uh, I move uh, that we name Dr. Susan Kim Cannon as loan finalist for the position of superintendent of WISD. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, motion passes. The um, loan finalist for the Waco ISD superintendent is Dr. Susan Kincannon. Um, the next step will be um, the 21 day waiting period required by law, and um, the board will vote um, on Dr. Kincannon's contract on August the 29th at our regularly scheduled board meeting. At this time, we will move um, to the consent agenda. I, no one asks that an item be taken off the consent agenda. Anyone wish to make a motion? I'll second the motion. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, motion carries. Number five, review and discuss the proposed budget and tax rate for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. Dr. Rowe and Ms. Davis, I'm not sure who's presenting. Ms. Davis. You have in, your pa in the agenda and also in your packets tonight um, a little a revised um, presentation of the proposed budget. Uh, basically, it's, it's most of the same information. I added a couple of slides uh, in under debt service to look a little bit at what we're, we're talking about for our long-term debt and perhaps um, doing in advance uh, defeasance of some debt. And there is a schedule that's been added in there by our financial advisor uh, that he provided to us after the agenda deadline. So um, we would hope to be able to do a little bit of a presentation on where we're going to go with debt. But this uh, uh, 650000 that will defease in the 2000, uh, it's a series 2016, the debt that's due in 2038. Um, that will save us about $477,000, but that schedule has been added into your packets, and it kind of shows what we've done over the last few years, where we've saved about $26 million um, by refunding debts over the, over the last 10 years. Um, I've also added a little bit of a recap of expenditures, kind of we talked about what built the budget over the last, um, it was in kind of in pieces throughout the presentation. So on page, um, in your new presentation, I think it's on page 14 perhaps. 
Yeah, on page 14, I sort of recap all of those increases to the budget. Um, as you are aware, we did have, and, and Wayne will talk about when she talks about salaries, as we got through the budget process, we had presented a preliminary salary schedule for teachers at, at the June meeting, but as we sort of resolved some of our um, revenue issues, uh, we I felt like we could do a little bit more, and with what the neighboring districts have done, we uh, put about another half million into that schedule, and we're able to increase the starting salary and um, increase the overall increases to at each level from about $3,600 to $4,000. So the other thing that I would sort of bring to your, t well, we are also, I've got some big pots of money set aside. We got a lot of money this year. We, we're generating about $19 million more than what we have had in the past. So you'll see on that schedule that I have set aside some money. Um, we talked a little bit about our capital improvement plans for facilities and our technology plans kind of come to you um, in a very preliminary form. But we, I have set aside in those areas $2.8 million for a combination of two million in technology infrastructure, 800,000 in some safety and security um, projects, and additionally 2.6 million in maintenance projects. Now, those have not been placed, those funds have not been placed in those budgets at this point. They are set aside as commitments and contingency fund. And so the uh, maintenance department and the technology department will be bringing back a refined um, plan probably in the September board meeting to kind of show you how those funds will be spent. Additionally, we have our replacement for buses of 700,000 and a couple of police cars for 200,000. But all of that's pretty much outlined on that recap so you can see those increases. Now, the very last page in your agenda is the uh, three main budgets by function, the general fund, the food service fund, and the debt service fund. That's actually in your board agenda. It's not in this packet I gave you tonight. But um, it does, this is the, the level of detail by function that we are required by law to adopt the budget. So. When we come back on the 29th, we will adopt the budget at that level. And then there are some other locally funded budgets that are in your packet as well for the Challenge Academy, for the Day School for the Deaf, um, Guama and Guaca. Those four budgets are also adopted by our board. The other funds in the district, the um, Title I and some of the federal funds are not actually budgets that are adopted by the school board because the um, authority for those budgets uh, is with the granting agency. So those are the budgets that we'll bring back and adopt the tax rate. And we'll get look at the notice in just a minute and you will um, approve the notice and then the tax rate that we're going to propose. So the tax rate at $1.17 that we were at at our m and rate, that is compressed under the laws. We talked about it, I think, in our June meeting of the three components. So that is, it was compressed down to $1.6835. Originally, all the presentations had it at $1.684. And um, we did get some direction from TEA this past week that we had to roll down. So they were rolling it down to 683. Um, just to, I guess, to be arbitrary, I went out a digit and left it the five on the end. So we had a little, you know, the $3,000 I think that generates. Um, anyway, so that's what we're recommending for the tax rate on the MNO side. On the INS side, as I said, we could have gone down slightly on that because just if we were paying off our scheduled debt, but we decided to leave that, because we kind of talked through that, leave that at what it was at the 23.41 cents and start paying off some of our, our long-term debt. 
And um, I'd like to, our financial advisor to come at some point and do a presentation on kind of where we're going to go with that. He's been working on some stuff, but um, we're going to do a little piece, as I said, um, and that's in that uh, in that debt rate. So. Um, if there's any questions, we can get on to, if not, we can get on to um, adopting or proposing a rate. Mr. Cheryl, um, with regards to the proposed teacher schedule that was just circulated as far as the recent change, did you indicate how much additional you built into the budget to cover that increase? Uh, I didn't show that specific amount for that increase. It was right around half a million dollars. The impact on the general fund was right. about half a million dollars. Overall, it was just under 600000 but some of that's picked up by mostly Title I. And roughly the average percent or the percent increase went from? Seven, it's a 7.6% now. Okay. And I don't remember what it was. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it starts at 49000 We were starting at 48000 before. Anybody else have any questions? So, Ms. Davis, what is the, um, what is the amount the tax, our tax rate is dropping and the savings? Have you, have, have you the best right choice, at right? 10 cents. Okay, so um, the total tax rate will drop by 10 cents for, for our taxpayers this coming year? Correct. And did y'all have, do you happen to know how much that equals as an average taxpayer, what savings that equals? Sorry. The average tax rate? Yeah, our average. I think, um, well, it's in the notice, the average home value in the notice is now a taxable value is 107,000. So that would basically, 10 cents would be about $107. Oh, that information's in our packet. And so what did you say the savings would be? So the savings is, it would be by itself. Yeah, it would be about $107. Now, actually, it's going up a little bit because the values are increasing a little bit more than the, what the rate went down. So mm -hmm. it's going up. Um, it says in the notice that it'll be um, the average taxpayer will pay about $52 more next year. Very nice. Good. Thank you. Yes. A question? Six point eight one percent. Six point eight one percent. Is that the average increase in the price? Okay. So the average increase in the price value is six. It's a hundred seven thousand dollar house. <coughs> mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else? No. No. Okay. Well, if you look at the notice, you can see that our average home value went up from ninety five thousand six thirty two to one hundred and seven one thirty seven from last year. The taxable value. Well, um, but the average six point eight one is overall commercial and everything. So <coughs> that's our total. So the motion needs to be specific. So on oh, can we? Oh, we're just we haven't moved to number six yet. Yes. Okay. Are you ready to move to number six? I am. Okay. Uh, item six: Consider, discuss, and take appropriate action regarding the notice of public meeting to discuss budget and proposed tax rate for the 1920 fiscal year, setting the proposed tax rate and the date, time, and place for the public meeting. So basically, approving this notice will approve the um, date of the public meeting, which will be at the August 29th board meeting. We will have the public meeting early in the meeting, and then after that, the same night we can, by law, the same night adopt the budget and the tax rate. And um, so we will do that that same night, but we're setting the, that date and this place for the public meeting, and then we are put, 
we would be recommending a tax rate, a maintenance and tax, and maintenance tax rate of a dollar six eight three five, an M and O rate of twenty three point four one cents. And so, by approving this notice, uh, we're approving the date and time for the public meeting and that proposed tax rate rates. Does someone need to read the motion specifically, or is it okay that? Someone moves to... In this case, for the proposed rate, when we adopt the rate, there will be very specific language, but for now, we can just approve this. At this As rate. presented? Mm -hmm. okay. As presented. Does anybody have any questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Madam President, I move that we approve the notice as presented. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. A second? I'll second the motion. Thank you, Ms. Houston. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now, this is an exciting part of the meeting as well. <coughs> Item seven, consider, discuss, and take appropriate action regarding the 2019-2020 employee compensation plan. Ms. Good evening, President Tickle. Dr. Rowe, members of the board, I'm very excited to recommend the 2019-2020 compensation plan. We will start with the teacher pay schedule, which uh, includes an average increase of 7.6%. In your agenda, you will see the um, current salary, which is the 18-19 salary, compared to the proposed salary for the teachers from zero, step zero to 27 plus. We are also recommending that the non-teacher pay schedules, um, those folks that fall in that category, the auxiliary staff and the paraprofessional staff receive a 4% increase. That increase will be off the midpoint of their assigned pay grade. And that the administrative and professional staff receive a 3% increase. As Ms. Davis said, we are also recommending that counselors receive a 6% of the midpoint. That is to be compliant with H, uh, the HB3 um, rules. And I also wanted to point out to you in your agenda um, that this will um, be significant for our custodial and cafeteria workers because they were previously getting paid at an entry level of $10.03 and their new hourly rate will be $11 an hour. The instructional aides will also see an increase from $12.96 per hour to $14.14 per hour. We also made adjustments for the substitutes. Um, we are always in dire need of substitutes and in an effort to be comfortable and competitive to similar and surrounding districts, we made several adjustments. Um, one of those that um, I feel is pretty significant is our certified teachers that come on, usually it's our retirees, uh, certified retirees that come on will now be making $100 per day. And there's also that option if they choose a long-term assignment that they will make $130, which is also included in your packet under the substitute pay tab. Also, we made adjustments in the temporary and extra duty pay schedule, which includes adjustments to make the rates for certain positions more comparable to the minimum rate for similar permanent positions. Ad adjustments were also proposed to help recruit temporary employees with specialized skills and summer school teachers um, that have a record of achieve, achieving student growth. So this is good for our um, teachers as well. Hopefully it will entice them to work summer school. We also made several adjustments to the stipend schedule. Um, a few of those are also new in the critical shortage area. And then we also are recommending that the, the district contribution for health insurance um, be $104.26 per month. And for those folks that waive health insurance, we give them a flexible spending account, and we're recommending that that remain at $41.67 per month. The cost of the proposed compensation plan is included in the proposed budget for 2019-2020, and administration is recommending the approval of the 2019-2020 employee compensation plan as presented. Your booklet also includes the other district comparisons, so I will be happy to answer any questions. Madam President. Yes, sir. I move that we accept the administration recommendation for the compensation plan. 
Second. 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 Is there any discussion? I have. I have to say <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I'm. I'm, I'm happy for that. I, I am too. Yes. <laughs> yes, Miss Houston. No. Well, I just want to commend the administration for going back to take another look at this because you have raised our minimum teacher salary um, a significant amount since we met. I, I guess in June, and now the. Um, a beginning salary for our um, zero brand new teachers is $49,000, which is very competitive in our region, um, and a significant raise from the $46,100. Um, and you see, um, I guess, a mid year, between 5 and 10, there are 8% raises. So, um, Thank you all so much for going back and taking a look at it, and Ms. Davis, finding more money for us that we can pay teachers. And then, of course, um, instructional aides and um, our custodial staff. I don't know that there are many people that work harder. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, and um, so I'm glad that we're able to at least um, pay them a little bit more and make those salaries competitive as well. So I just wanted to say thank you. I guess I'm assuming that y'all are all going to approve it, huh? That really wasn't a discussion. That was thanking you guys. So I guess, um, are we ready to vote? <coughs> yes, a question, Mr. Sykes. Glenn, uh, so on the uh, health insurance, we're still covering the full cost for the employee portion of the health insurance? Yes, for the basic plan. Okay. We do have a basic plan, um, high deductible health plan, and that cost will cover 100%. Okay, just yeah. want to make sure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I will entertain a motion. That was already moved and second. That's right, the first thing you did. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank I want to commend you, for you guys because it is hard to recruit and retain teachers and um, it's very important that we stay competitive and that we show our teachers and our staff that we value them. So I appreciate the vote. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Then item number nine, announcements. Dr. Rowe, Mr. DeBeer. We're very excited for our eighth annual Family Fest this weekend. It'll be held at both University High School and Waco High School from nine to noon. It's a great event that brings all of our students in those two feeder patterns together with their families to get resources from the community, those students who are registered already for school are eligible for free school supplies. There's a wealth of information on our website, including bus schedules for free transportation to Family Fest. If you go to wacoisd.org slash Family Fest. And then on August 20th, we have the first day of school. So it is a busy but very exciting month in Waco ISD. Is that it? Anything else, Dr. Ryan? I'd like to also add as part of our announcements that we want to thank the community that's been so involved in helping our children get their supplies and materials and all the things they're going to need to start the school year off. And we also want to thank those who have volunteered to come and give them a high five in the morning that they arrive at school so they will know that uh, we encourage them to have a good school year and that we are going to be there with them as we move ahead. So we invite all of you to come out. It's going to be the first time you'll get to see new kids entering school for the next school year. That's always exciting. So thank you so much. Before you um, leave the mic, will you um, invite everyone to convocation next Monday, right? Well, next Monday at the convention center, August 15th. Mr. DeBeer can do that. Mr. Lee, but I don't know how many of you. We'd love to have all of you join us coming. <laughs> for a convocation next Thursday, August 15th, starting at 9 a.m. It's a, a wonderful way to celebrate the start of a new school year. 
Thursday, not a Thursday. Monday, we'd love to have you with us as well, but not for convocation. We'll come up with something else. It doesn't matter. He'll be late anyway. Hey. All right. We're excited. We have a pretty rigorous but joyful program planned. Our theme this year, and we hope you'll enjoy the gifts that you have because we've already started. Our theme is Rise. So we, ex we have high expectations for the next year, and we do think that we're going to move the line up. So we're all about rising. Thank you. Thank you for that. With that, we're adjourned. <laughs>